am Dexba and this is the Elmira 2 by Neutral Labs. First of all, I want to thank Martin from Neutral Labs for sending me the Elmira 2, an instrument that made me question my life and synthesizers in general more than you probably should have. And before you switch and turn off the video because you think this is sponsored, no, I have not been pressed to review it. All in all, I'm not a reviewer, I'm not famous, I'm not influential in the commercial sense of the term. But since I got it and I spent time playing with it, I would like to share my impressions with all of you. I'll keep my philosophical questions for the last part of the video, so let's start with what is an Elmira? As the name suggests, once you know it maybe, the first version of the Elmira was a more direct homage to the Soma Lira 8, and we can still see it a bit from the layout and the use of the metal pads as the method of input. The similarities though end here, since the Elmira features much more, and also less in some cases, than its original inspiration. On the much more side we have quantization, the fact that the voices can be switched to different modes, ranging from wavetable to chords to noise and so on, and even the fact that both of these features are addressable individually for each voice by keeping PG pressed and selecting mod P, and it will blink to the corresponding mode. We can exit by pressing it again. There are two LFOs with different wave shapes that can be clocked, there are attenuators, there are CV in and out, but most important of all, there is a filter and there are envelopes. Sort of. And you'll see the recurring theme with the Elmira is this asterisk, this sort of. We have a clock generator that can be bypassed by an external clock, you can simply tap the time, the tempo, the time you want, or keep it pressed to delete it. Um, a pitch, but not step or gate sequencer, an audio in and out, only mono, and I know it makes sense being this also a Eurorack module, but since right now is in desktop configuration, I would have loved to be able to use it directly with headphones. The secret neutral lab source is in the analog and the rest of the synth is digital ouch circuit, which we'll tackle further down the video and can be further modified with including cards or with electronic components like resistor, diodes and bipolar capacitors, where bipolar is the important part since unipolar capacitors can get really nasty if exposed to reverse polarity. And I mean... It's fun to make them explode, but maybe don't do it on your precious instrument. As for the build quality, the panel is in PCB material, the case is uh, bioplastic, and it feels like it. The sides are wood, and it is powered by USB-C or Eurorack 12 volts power, but be aware you cannot use the enclosure as a tiny Eurorack case. And it draws so little power that my power bank goes to sleep mode when I use it. And that's quite unfortunate, given the advanced settings cannot be saved, so each time the power goes off I have to set them again. Each of the four voices is identical to the others, with gate, mode and wave input. Mod has a different use for each of the modes of the voices, ranging from the tuning to changing the core to additional filtering, and we are gonna see them later while checking out said modes. Wav wave is to change the position in the current page wave table. So let's do this. Okay, as you expected. And there is also the tune input a CV input tracking the usual 1 volt per octave. The only individual output is ENV, sending out the signal generated by the pressure of the metal pads, according to the attack and decay set by the ENV here. They are exactly the same, the four voices, the ENV knob here. Do you remember I said that Elmira has envelopes? Yeah, once again there is the, the asterisk. Um, and this time the caveat is that the control is offered via a single knob, with a decay always longer than its attack, and when it's long, it is really long, and when it's short, it is not completely short. And this is, 
actually neither good nor bad per se, but something to consider. So he's the shortest attack and decay because, yeah, they share the same envelope. Okay, um, maybe Vakcholesque, if you <laughs> if you permit the term. And as I said, long is very long. Okay, full volume, and then I will let it go. But as you heard, it gets really long in the decay portion, but not so much in the attack portion of the sound. The delay is pretty straightforward and it can be clocked to the master tempo. The feedback gets ultra crunchy after 12 o'clock. And as you may have noticed, crunchy is the theme for the mirror. In the default configuration, the delay comes after the filter, but you can switch that in the menu. And I will demonstrate quickly the delay here with a short sound, the, the shortest sound possible. And as in the Lyra 8, the delay even turned all the way down the feedback will eat the sound quite a lot. Okay, that was it. All right, let's talk about the aforementioned advanced settings menu because it is an integral part of the Elmira experience. I will have to read from the cheat sheet because there is no way I can remember all the codes. To input a specific value, you will have to keep the mode P button pressed and then dial in the values using the individual voices PG buttons, which, by the way, scroll through the wavetable pages in normal operation. I probably forgot to say that before, so like... Next page. And there are quite a few, I honestly don't remember how many. So let's try this advanced settings menu. If you want to turn on the low fi yes, to lowest fying reverb I've ever encountered, you will have to push down the mod P button, keep it pressed, and then enter the code 442. So press the fourth voice PG button twice, and then the second voice PG button once. Let's do this. It's like, keep it pressed, four, four, two. And yeah, this is the reverb. And even in the manual, it said it, it is very crude. And it is, it, it has no extra feature controls. It's just there. Okay. I'm gonna switch it off immediately by dialing 441. So like, again, mod P, 441. No more crude reverb. Running through the codes, we have the global saturation, and by default, it is set to hard, which makes it really crunchy. So for my general exploration, I kept it to soft, so I could enjoy more the added crunchiness given by the delay or the ouch processing. So this is on soft and yeah I can assure you we are not clipping anywhere we are almost all with the way down with the output volume and now I'm gonna check the code and input the normal hard which you get when you turn on the device. So the code for the saturation is one, two, and then the amount, so like one to one is no saturation, one to two is the soft, one to three, the default for hard, and uh, I don't remember the name already, but one, two, four is just extreme, so this is soft, and it's already fairly crunchy, uh, so let's one, two, one. For reference, this is no saturation. And one, two, three. And 
Yeah, as I said, the main theme for the Elmira is crunchiness, so you can see and hear how the voices kind of eat themselves without the beatings. Okay, and let's try. I never tried it. The one, two, four. Okay, um, let's go back to one to two, soft. I kind of prefer the soft to non because non gets really clean and yeah, it's not the point and also it's not really pleasing. I like some warmth to the to the instrument. We then have the micro tuning defaulted to 12 tone equal temperament, but you can switch to seven, 17 and, and so on. We can decide to have the delay synced or not, and unsynced is the default. And keep in mind that when synced, you may not be able to get the full 1.6 seconds of maximum time. But yeah, it's definitely useful if you're interacting with other instruments. Then we have the aforementioned signal routing, defaulted to filter, then delay, but yeah, you can switch it. And once again, I keep telling you the defaults because that's where the Elmira will go back when you turn it off. It would be nice to have some way to recall its state, especially for multi-day recordings or going live with it. It's not something I do, I don't go live, <laughs> but uh, you know, um, it would be nice even just to remember that crunchiness I decided to set or the filter type or yeah, the sync delay, yes or no. The whole number three submenu is devoted to filter types, where the default is a 12 dB or tuple low pass resonant filter that I'm gonna demonstrate now. Okay, maybe this is not. Okay, this is more usable for filtering. Okay, this is the slope, very gentle, as we expect from a 12 dB. And this is with a resonance. Cranked to the maximum. Okay. But there are also four pole resonant low pass ladder filter using the code 331. Let's try that too. So like three three, one, definitely a steeper slope, and the resonance gets nastier, and again I'm not clipping uh, anywhere outside of the instrument, it is just, it's nasty, dirty, crunch in nature. And we love it for that. Um, we also have non-resonant, high pass and low pass that you will control with the resonance depending on where they are, in series or in parallel and notch. It will open and close and yeah, decide the amount. Do yourself a favor and print the cheat sheet. You will need it. On a side note, I'm 100% sure I will need to override YouTube automatic subtitles or these will come out as cheat shit. Okay, so let's put back the default filter. So, three, three, two. Nice, 12 dB. I love 12 dB, even more so 18 dB, but that they're quite rare. Okay, so um, submenu 23X is for the octave switch and you'll use it enough to remember it by memory plus it is fairly intuitive since you will simply put 23 before the number of the voice you want to pitch up so for voice one you will dial 231 and that's it so let's go like this is the, uh, so like two three one down yeah it only switches from down up there is only this octave, so yeah, this is down. And if we want to go up again, two, three, one, now is up. 
okay going further on the advanced settings menu we have lfo duties useful to access the sample and hold capabilities and then lfo sync in case you're a control freak who wants to sync lfos portamento is a useful tool to hide some tuning during a performance and still land on a precise note but is defaulted to none and finally calibration which is also the only thing that gets saved and is only for special cases when you realize your Elmira is not responding as it should to incoming pitch via CV. Now let's explore the 10 different sound modes. Starting with red, it offers you two extra oscillators per voice, one lower and one higher, that we can spread or better detune using the mod knob. So. Okay, the field is opened up. Okay, let's use this so more intelligible sound. It never gets too crazy. Just that, that's why I said spread and not just the tuning because it is still very recognizable the root note and just makes the sound a bit thicker. Green gives you two sub oscillators, so these are definitely in tune. A so one octave below and a square two octaves down. And the mod is a volume control for the subs. This could be a nice moment to dial in the 23x menu setting to pitch up or down the main voice and give some room or close together the sub oscillators like. Okay. Here are the sub oscillators creeping in. Now we're pitched up, but as we learn, we can go 23, 3, go down and group them together. Note that pitching the voice up or down won't affect the sub, so they will get two and three octaves down from the higher note or yeah one and down one and two down when the note the main note the root note let's call it is in its lower state mint here we go which needs some fantasy to distinguish from the cyan we'll see later is chord mode with the mod knob selecting the chord maybe let's go up the octave one very wise choice is the use of just temperament instead of equal temperament for the chord mode so you will get interesting beatings no matter what to do while interfacing with other voices purple is a wave shaper and as you may have guessed the mod shapes the wave thing to modulate alongside the position in the wavetable. Blue is a saturator, which is funny because I don't usually associate blue with saturation, and that may say a lot about music, arts, and our perception of the world. Um, so, yeah, as I said, on the Elmira crunchiness, is the keyword so with the blue mode you will be able to saturate literally at each stage starting from the oscillator to the filter to the delay to the ouch and the general mixing cyan which is a less poetic but brighter more saturated mint is a bit mangler which should resemble the sound of a circuit band instrument going up with the mod values. Yeah, 
it works definitely better with some position in the wave table than others. So find your your sweet spot. By the way, I'm not using any external effect after the Elmira, even though it would benefit a lot from a nice stereo reverb or even a nice stereo delay. And, and that's also said in the manual. But I wanted to give you the pure sound of, of the instrument so we can, yeah, check the fine details. But maybe... Let's try just these with a bit of reverb. Maybe a bit less reverb. And with external delay. Yellow reduces the sample rate going up to complete destruction. And that will actually change the pitch of your note. Nice. Yeah. Elmira is all about beatings. That the sentence is not maybe the best, but beatings, musical beatings, beautiful musical beatings. Yes, the still that doesn't sound, still doesn't sound right. White is noise, and ironically enough, it is really white noise. The mod knob dials in how much noise you want, and fully clockwise, you will get just noise. So this is the sound we, we had before. Okay, uh, I was just changing the position in the wave table, and we can add white noise. until it becomes just noise and yeah it never gets old to just make the wind or the sea waves even better with the band pass for the, the match Pink is a non-resonant low-pass filter useful to make individual voices more mellow or, as the manual suggests, to turn off the voice and still be able to use the pads and its envelope. So, yeah, and this is the suggested manual versions, like we're not hearing anything because it is fully counterclockwise, so fully turned down. And yeah, here we go. Let's pick something with a more, with a richer harmonic content. And we're filtering. Okay, this can be very, very useful, especially if you're using these in Eurorack too. Yeah, you have access to the pads. Nice. Lime, 
the uglier version of yellow, is a known resonant high-pass filter, useful for tidying up a bit of the mix. And I'm laughing because who are we kidding? There is nothing tidy on the Elmira. We're here for the crunch and dirt, but yeah, it is still useful. I would need some filter for these planes passing by, but I hope you don't mind too much. This video is getting very long already, so I won't tire you with the demonstration of the LFO, or the ADD or ATT ports. They behave exactly as you expect. The LFO1 has only a sine wave as a shape, while the LFO2 has a wider range of shapes that can be conveniently scrolled through via CV or via the knob. And also the LED is pretty convenient to check. Yeah, even, even the shape, we can kind of understand the shape we selected through the LED. ADD is a useful tiny little mixer where you can choose the amount of each source and then come out with one resulting signal. ATT will attenuate a copy of the input from 3.3 volts to zero, turning the knob away from the center. So yeah, it, it is not actually an attenuator, even though you can twist the knob in both directions. The 0 to 3.3 unipolar volt range is also an important limit to mention. While there is no official standard in EURAC, the general consensus is that modulation should come in the form of minus 5 to plus 5 volts or 0 to 10 volts. What that means is that if I try to use the Elmira with my Bukla 245T, I would have to be very careful in putting the pitch since the sequencer goes from 0 to 10 volts. And while I would not damage the Elmira, I would max out the tuning knob about at a third of a turn. So yeah, um, your mileage may vary. And again, you you wouldn't be breaking anything. It is just you 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 would have to be very precise using external sequencers with this. But I don't think that's the point of this. Am I right? The ouch portion, the secret sauce, so secret, I would find pretty hard to explain properly what it does and, and when and how, especially since the output is the combined interaction of the choke and bite knobs, which have to be pointed towards each other in order to be off like angry eyebrows. And um, you have to be kind of careful with the volume too, because choke is kind of harmless it, it will choke the sound and the bite it will destroy the sound so uh, yeah be aware of that and be careful if you're using headphones or <laughs> connected already and especially if you're using modulation here that is not very predictable. They destroy the sound in a beautiful way. And they also destroy the audio coming from the input. So you can plug in some other mono signal and mess with it in the ouch section. Lovely. And experiment. This is very clearly the point of the Elmira and the exposed connectors. So let yourself explore and mess with it. Um, it comes with some kind of cards that are little PCBs that pin into these. Uh, I'm not showing them now just because they would be vertical and you wouldn't see anything. And yeah, they kind of mess with the internal security. And you can do that. Like resistors are <laughs> one dollar for a million resistors. So like have fun with this. With all of this out of the way, this is probably the right moment to point out the part of my kind of existential crisis while using this instrument. 
especially because it has been sent to me. The Mira has plenty of limitation, like the single knob to address both the attack and decay, and these limitations are real only within the confined system of the standalone use. Since the Elmira sports gate inputs, I could easily control it with an 11 stage envelope running through a stereo filter and then into an overkill stereo delay. But what would be the use of this? This is also why I showed it as a standalone instrument for all this time. And we're gonna check it in Eura context definitely in, in a later video. And I know everything is subjective, and that's also why my head hurts. Because anybody could come here and comment like, but Dex, but... And, and it feels strange to refer to myself with a fake name, but... But Dex, but that's not how you use it, that's not what it's meant for. It's a great starter pack for the modular journey, it's about the crunchiness, and it's about the beating and destroying everything, and do not understand what is going on, and punch resistors in the in the in the patch bay and, and they would be right because uh, deep down i know it too this is hard to do especially because i'm conflicted and i'm conflicted because it is hard to do and and because i'm conflicted if i wanted to bash the instrument i would have done it i could have even sent it back without ever playing with it or posting a video there were no strings attached. The conflict is that I personally, not, not because I received it, uh, I personally, and, and I, I always stress that, I was on the verge of buying it before they contact me. So like, I was going to spend my money on, on this. Um, and I would have been conflicted at the same level in the same way. Um, the conflict is that I want to like this, and it is likable. It's tiny and packed with stuff. It is cute. It even has a tiny face on it. You can make capacitors explode with it. And no, please don't do it. But all my efforts were to uncover what was the deal, the soul, the mission of this instrument on its own, and I struggle with it a lot. Four voices in this configuration are too few to create ever-evolving harmonies, even with all the beatings, especially as we saw it, it's not easy to access the menu for, for many features. And that's also something that even Soma knew that, because they, after the Lyra 4, they quickly switched to Lyra Eight. The sound quality, while interesting for the beatings, um, I would say it's not remarkable. And that's okay, since the Elmira is mostly the combination of all of its parts, especially the ouch feedback circuit, but it's very easy to lose sight of what you're trying to achieve if each voice can be 10 different flavors of instruments, uh, which reset once you turn off the device. It gives me Apple Vision Pro vibes, and, and that's actually a ultra big compliment, in the sense that the technology is there, but without the right use case presented, it is easy to get lost, both as an instrument player and an instrument maker. I said that already, but the output being mono is the biggest overlook that on a portable USB power instrument cannot be justified. But, but Dex, but again, yes, 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 I know this is a very nice instrument. It is very tactile. It is very interfaceable with other pieces of modular gear. We could even go as far as to say it is even fairly inexpensive even though it is still 630 euros, which at the time of filming is half of the minimum wage in Spain. And uh, in Italy, we don't have minimum wage because uh, I guess La Dolce Vita, I don't know. But um, 
it is still 630 euro and that's i mean it's a bit steep for these but as a module with two lfos and the tiny mixer and the attenuator and the filter and the saturation the delay the sequencing the touch interface all the different modes and remember these could be four different oscillators each independent so you could really use it as four different modules it is quite a bargain 630 euro and for example it even has many convenient features missing on much more expensive semi-modular synths like the intelligent cascadia which i also consider but um, i would have loved to see what we have here like uh, uh, chromatic modes like a onboard quantizer some proper effects and some more digitality that could tie up all together so even though this is kind of hard to say and no i'm not saying i don't like the instrument because i do my final verdict is great job neutral labs for real but I can't wait to get my hands on an Elmira 3. By the way, um, let me know what you think. Um, I will put the whole jam where I actually use three oscillators in one mode, noise, and the first voice in sub mode. So like, it is very useful to be able to change um, settings for each voice. But let me know in the comment, what do you think? How do you use it? Uh, or how would you like to use it? And even in a Eura context as a first starting kit where you can have everything right out of the box, maybe I passed that moment in time since a while ago, so I cannot remember what it's like to have the first module, like many people, are still buying Moog Model 32 as a, as a start module or the Behringer Neutron. So yeah, let me know what do you think, how do you use it, and yeah, feel free to comment down here, or you can even email me to tell me how dumb I am and how I can get the maximum potential from this tiny beta of uh, great instruments without the s the final s not the s of oh, uh, fuck i ruined the video mm.